Funding for Elwood City Limits is brought to you by Chandler LaFave Boten, Christopher Ifill, Crescent Fresh, Dan Mike Dawson Silva, Ian Collis, John DeLong, John Griswold, Josias Melendez, Leanne S., Light Relentless, Sam Solero, and Teresa. Become our Patreon today, join our private Discord, and get us closer to watching Detective Pikachu at patreon.com slash Elwood City Limits. In a one horse open sleigh, o'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Ha ha ha, bells on bobtail ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Binky Bob. Welcome, everybody. Well, we are well deep into the holiday season at this point. What, no matter what you're celebrating, uh, I hope you're celebrating it well with friends, family, or at least people you like. Uh, this is Will Young for Elwood City Limits. Welcome. Uh, now, we are going to be tackling the new season of Arthur coming up in the new year, the new season being season six. Uh, but before we get there, I was actually br- it was brought to my attention that there was a special piece of content that would work very, very well for this time of year. So I decided to make a little bonus episode out of it, a little uh, holiday treat for all of us. Uh, but this holiday treat wouldn't be possible without my guest today. Uh, he brought this to my attention and I, and really wanted to do it as part of an episode. So I said, Hey, why not? Sounds like fun. And indeed it was fun to listen to. And uh, we're going to be talking about it in just a moment here. My guest, of course, being an accomplished podcaster in his own right. And uh, somebody who recently snagged uh, a couple of Arthur interviews for his own podcast, the DJ Bob Show, that would be DJ Bob Runkle. Hey, Bob. Uh, How are you? I'm all good, man. It's really good to have you here, and I'm glad that we could uh, come together on something that is uh, Arthur-related and holiday related. Now, what made what made you kind of think think of this as uh, something kind of uh, Arthur adjacent that you thought you might want to talk about? Yeah, well, as an avid listener to the podcast, long time listener, first time caller, I um, <laughs> I, I know you guys like to riff on things. I know you guys like to kind of make fun and have a little fun with the with the content. Mm-hmm. There's so much to unpack here. <laughs> <laughs> so. Ain't that the, ain't that fun. the truth? Yes, I, I I agree. This was uh, I mean, I I know I'm kind of giving my hand away a little bit here, but this was a a very fun listen, and thank you for uh for providing the album here. The album we're talking about this is the second of three, and it's called Arthur's Perfect Christmas. It's kind of a companion release to the uh to the TV movie that uh, Lucas and I also did a commentary of patreon.com slash Elwood City Limits. But I I didn't encounter this when I was a kid. In fact, I didn't even really know it existed until you brought it up. Uh, what's your history with this, Bob? Well, I would rent it, or borrow it, rather, from the library. Mm-hmm. And as a kid, you don't realize how weird things are. You kind of take things for, you know, for face value. And mm-hmm. then... Uh, then, flash forward, I guess, ten years later, yeah. I discovered the album again at a thrift store. I picked it up and said, you know what, this is some strange stuff. So, it's good, but it's also very strange. It's definitely not like a lot of other christmas albums that i've listened to for a couple of reasons but uh yeah like you said there's a lot to unpack here and you're gonna uh kind of be my guide through it a little bit you have that history with it for me i just encountered this for the first time listening to it just recently and um what we have here it's an album that came out in 2000 it actually came out between the fourth and the fifth season so kind of right around our time for the mainline podcast i would have been uh I would have just turned 10 years old when when this came out. Oh, jeez, I was five. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm. I, I. It's okay. It's okay, Bob. I know that I'm the old man when it no, comes to. No, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so what we have here is kind of a mix of original songs for this album, and that and that are in the Arthur's Perfect Christmas special, and some take takes on some classic Christmas carols and other uh, carols from well other cultures and other uh, parts of the world. Um, so let's kind of let's kind of get into it here, uh, Bob. The, the The album starts off with uh, the track that's called "Perfect Christmas," which also opens up the special. So you had an interview recently with uh, with Michael Yarmish on your show, and you, you you it was a really great interview, by the way. I really enjoyed listening to it. Yeah, I'm really proud of it. It's one of my career highlights, as you would say, because and- it's just really cool. And he, you can hear him here on this track in kind of his uh, his uh, closer to puberty Arthur voice. But we also have a singing voice for Arthur. Uh, we also, I also did an episode on Arthur's first album there, and he, uh, Michael Yarmish did a lot of this, a lot of the singing there. But for this one, they got a uh, they like, uh, another. Okay. Sing- they were like, okay, he can do it. <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe that conversation did have to happen at some point, but uh, yeah, Philip Penalosa is Arthur's singing voice. I thought he was really good. What did you think? I didn't know he had different. I for a while there, until I looked it up, I thought it was Michael. I don't know how I thought it was Michael because they sound nothing alike. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, who knows? Maybe with uh, with his voice dropping, you thought maybe he, it automatically kind of brings the singing chops up. It's like upgrading in a video <laughs> game or something. Yeah, who knows? But, but much like uh, a lot of the songs on this album, this one's kind of it's really upbeat. It's kind of got a swing vibe to it. It's very Broadway. Yes, very Broadway. That's a good. That's a good way of uh, of classifying it. Uh, it's a it's a big showstopper tune. Uh, to start it off, Arthur kind of talking about how this is going to be a perfect Christmas. He's also very critical of uh, too much tinsel in Christmas decorations. What do, you, what do you think about that? Again, over... Again, there's some things that need to be said, and I guess, you know, Arthur needed to say that. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't really, uh, I, I don't really do much decoration for. I celebrate Christmas, so not a whole lot of Christmas decoration in my house. But even, even back when I was kind of living with my family, we didn't really do a whole lot of tinsel either. So this was a new, this was a new one for me. Thank goodness we didn't uh, commit that I cardinal sin. Mo- I think it's more of a classic, like, like thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thing, and they're trying to do that whole spectacle of the big musical number. Because even the way he's dressed in that musical number, yeah. if you remember the special, it's really classic, and it's really trying to evo- evoke like old Hollywood kind of feeling mm-hmm. to it. So that's what I get out of that. Maybe that could deeper. Uh, view of it but that's how i see it well it's funny you say that because um for some of these for some of these songs that are also in the special um some of them stand out stand okay on their own i think including this one but then there's a couple of other ones that kind of work a little bit better when you have a visual to play off of as we'll get into later, I think. so yeah, that, I, I imagine I it's I did I watched the special last year. I haven't watched it yet this year, but I do remember Arthur like decked out to the nines. So that would have really uh, pushed pushed it even further, like you said. Yeah, and you know the other thing I want to bring up. I mean, skipping to the second track if you want to. Yeah, um, let's do it. Uh, Jingle bells, which you know is. Everybody knows it. But what I find interesting, with a lot of these songs in the special itself, Mm -hmm. they use instrumental pieces of them in dialogue. Okay. So it's like, oh, so that's where that part of the song comes from. (laughs) And it's like, just some of, like, that song is good, but it's kind of disjointed. I don't know if you agree, but it's just, weird i i can't say i can't say that i 
maybe uh, uh, and it's because I was recording commentary for it. Maybe I didn't even notice that. So uh, I, I'm glad that you had your, had your listening ears on. I do want to talk about. So, like Bob said, the second uh, the second track after Perfect Christmas is Jingle Bells. I kind of wanted to talk about these all in kind of a grouping. So one of the uh, I guess categories of song that are on this is just the Arthur cast, and they're doing you know Christmas standards. So we got Jingle Bells, uh, Here We Come a Wassling, um, and just just kind of stri- straight up stuff done. Yeah. So uh, and and like I said kind of kind of before, there's a bit of swing. Some of them are a bit jazz inspired. Some of them are uh, have a bit of rock in rock to them. They sound pretty good. I mean, the Arthur the Arthur voice cast very good singers as well. Yeah, I, I, um, there are some highlights on this album which I'll get to as far as vocals. <laughs> yeah. But, um, with things like Jingle Bell. You, you, it that song just kind of came thrown together to me. Like, do you mean? In, uh, how do you mean? It's like okay, let's get these guys in a studio, guys and girls in a studio. Here's a lyric sheet, go. Cause it's not being used in the special; it's just for the album. My one complaint with this album, and it's not negative at all. Why twenty six songs? Why not ten? That is a lot. That to to be to be fair to you, that that is qu- quite a bit. There is quite a bit of real estate taken up by this. But um, I I guess my only my counter to that would be they would want it to have a bit of um, evergreen appeal. You know, like jingle bells and stuff like that's never going to really go out of style. So uh, maybe they maybe they just wanted to have you know to put these on here and then you could turn those on whenever even if your kids grow out of Arthur or something like that which is never a problem in my household mine I mean there now I know Bob I know that you want to that you want to talk about this uh we also have some classic christmas carols that are done <laughs> a little a little bit differently as we get into the third track here now it's listed as the first noel and this is one of I have five songs here on the album which is dw singing her own version of the carols bob what can you tell us about this now they should have put these in the special somehow (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah you know what they should there should have i don't remember dw having a lot to do she should have had 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 a subplot of like twisting around the christmas carols much to much to arthur's chagrin that's a good call the only thing that she did in that special, I don't know if you remember, was complain because she couldn't get that doll or whatever it was. That's right. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. That's, well, and I mean, DW complaining, what is it? It's a, it's a day of the week that ends in day. This would have been at least a little something, something a little peppier. And these are, these are pretty funny. Yeah. I, I think I just sent you a text not too long ago, just. Laughing at the fact that these are on there. So which so which one would you say is your is your favorite? And I've and so we've got the first Noel and We Three Kings. Now with the first Noel, DW just counts up to four Noels. <laughs> They're very short, so that one's like thirty seconds long. It's like the first Noel, the second Noel, the third Noel, and then and, so and, and then she like I don't know any more Noels or something like that. But it's That's... uh yeah. But my favorite is We Three Kings, just because of how out there it is. Oh, yeah? It's like kissing a bear in back of a car. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, yeah, they get really, really weird on these ones. This is where the, this must be where, like, the weird stuff comes in that you kind of mentioned at the top there. Yeah, we've got other ones, like, instead of Oh Little Town of Bethlehem, it's Oh Little Clucking Breathless Hen. Like, that's a, that's a reach, buddy. I don't know how <laughs> they got that one. That was, they must have, they must have spent, like, an afternoon just figuring out that one. Yeah, I just want, I just, I kind of want to be a fly in the wall in the writer's room when they were writing these, because... <laughs> I, I if a fly in the wall or or Bob I'd lo- I'd love it if you if you kind of got to make up your own here I think you could have had a couple yeah. uh, to put in here too yeah my, just, I they're so weird yet they're so endearing 
and they're really short, so they it's not like DW does the full song. She just kind of does the line, like the title of it, and then it's like no more than thirty seconds, so it's totally fine. Yeah. Um. So we so we get a, we get a bit of that. I'll just mention as well. She does. Uh, what time is it? Instead of what child is this? And instead of O oh, Tannenbaum, which is Oh Christmas tree. I didn't realize it wasn't originally Oh Christmas tree. It's O oh, Tanning Mom. And then Arthur cuts her off at that one. That's the last one on the on the album. I yeah. I, again, they should have done a companion of this with just her because. I would have loved that. A hundred percent. So after this, we get, this is the credit song on the Arthur, Arthur's Perfect Christmas, Boogie Woogie Christmas, in the grand tradition of the rock-inspired holiday songs, like uh, the Brian Setzer Orchestra's version of Jingle Bells and uh, uh, oh, Run Run Rudolph, all those kinds of ones. Yeah. Again, this is also in the special, but briefly really brief so i wonder if they wanted to use more in the special and they couldn't so they just put it in the credits either way it's uh it, it definitely sets it apart from the other songs because this one can stand alone it has no connection to arthur whatsoever and you wouldn't know that this is from a kid's property yeah, it's true. Uh, like, there's not a whole lot. There's almost nothing that kind of brings it back to Arthur. It's just kind of something fun to end off a special on. You could put this on a on a holiday playlist today. And like, you grew up with it. You're like, is this yeah. from, is this from <laughs> Arthur? <laughs> that, yeah. That's well, Bob. That's the one that you sneak in to your family's Christmas playlist, and they're like, "Hey, what's this?" And yeah. you're like, "I know where it's from." We also get so we get a couple more. Uh, we get a. You know, a regular a regular Carol, DW Carol, and then we get uh, another category for this album, which is Christmas Carols from other countries. That was we get very one... smart. Yes, I agree. Um, this one's actually led by Mister Mister Ratburn, and it's uh, <laughs> fum 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 fum, which comes from Spain. I thought these were really interesting. I love that they include these. Yeah, they're fun. Again. And- I love hearing Mr. Rapper sing after homework on the first album. <laughs> like that, you need more of it. It's wonderful. He has a re- he has a really good voice. I yeah. mean, even just speaking, he's got that nice lower register. And then once he's once he's singing, he's got a he's got a very wide range. And so this was this was a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, let's let's uh, let's get into it here a little bit. Uh, in terms of carols from other countries, we have. Uh, there's a there's actually like a three song section that we get for Francine's family and it's like the Hanukkah section of the album where it's like Hanukkah oh Hanukkah uh Sevivon and the Hanukkah blessing. I thought this was really cool too. It's just a nice little thing. Uh again, uh, Lucas and I have kind of talked about how Arthur represents in its in its best moments it represents a lot of diversity among its uh its viewership and i thought it was really cool for them to include you know not just a token song uh for you know jewish kids who love the show but like a whole three song set like oh this is for me i'm not because most times like people of other ethnicities especially around this time of year christmas is so commercialized with radio and specials but Arthur always made room for the other culture as well. And it, and it might have been, depending on how old you were, if you saw Arthur's Perfect Christmas on TV, that may have been the first time that you ever even heard what Hanukkah was. Yeah, for me, yeah. It's really smart, and they've always done that so well. Yeah, I agree. And, th- and, it, was, and it was also like some of, the, some of these, some of these uh, tunes from other countries really slapped uh, Lucas isn't here with us, so I gotta, I gotta bring, I gotta bring the uh, the verbiage. But you know, like the Han- Hanukkah, or Hanukkah, that's a jam. Yeah, <laughs> yep. And you know, it's, I know we're talking about the Hanukkah song, but there's one song that I kind of wanted to highlight here. Yeah, and go it's, ahead. It's, uh, what's, here we come, Washeling. Okay, yeah. That sounds like I just can't wait to be king. From the Lion Does King. It? Oh, no way. Hang on. 
I okay. I I see. I kind of listened to that. I was like, okay, it's a carol. The the tune did the, not like come the, into my mind. The okay. style of it, like if you okay. listen to it, um, real fast. I don't know if we can put it in, but I want your reaction because it sounds exactly like it. All right, I'll tell you what. So I'm gonna I'm going to I'm going to put this I'm gonna put the song in the. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be putting a bun- editing a bunch of these songs into into here, but let me see if I can take a listen. Okay, so I've got it on right now. It's kind of got like the same kind of percussion, yes, like at right. the, same, the same kind of drum beat as "I Can't Wait to Be King." And it's like the way they're singing, it's just, it's just, you could tell yeah. there was some influence there. I mean, it. I, <laughs> I mean, I it's not a, it's not exact, but. I hear that. No, it, it, same same kind of vibe, and I mean, here we come a wassailing is a is a is a Christmas standard. So I don't know if there's uh, there's any any fear of copyright infringement here, but the arrangement of it does kind of remind me a bit of the Lion King. Now that you said that, I I totally get where you're coming from. Yeah, I'm like, is that is that Lion King? <laughs> <laughs> did you did you have to do a double take? Yes. Uh, we also get some songs. Uh, George comes on the the album really the really quick, and we get two songs uh, that come from Sweden. One, oh yeah. Uh, one of them, I oh gosh, I I'm not even gonna try and pronounce, but the other one is uh, Santa Lucia. These were also really. Uh, interesting to listen to as well, and I believe they are briefly in the Christmas special as well. Very brief, very very brief, because the Swedish part is only in the first uh, ten minutes of the special. Yeah, it's like it's almost like a blink and you'll miss it. But yeah. it is cool. It is cool that that's in there. That's something that I don't even think we would think of today necessarily. Just the. Uh, the Swedish traditions, and then we have one that I don't even know what the connection is. It's uh, "Bring a Torch, Jeanette Isabella," and that one's kind of from France. It's a French carol. Uh, did, did they talk about? Did they mention? No, French? I don't think. I don't think. I uh, I don't th- like because, um, you know, Francine introduced the uh, the Hanukkah songs. George introduced the Swedish ones. Nobody really introduced this one. It was they're just kind of like, oh, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, I've certainly never heard it before in my life, but, uh, Wikipedia tells me it's a French Christmas carol. So, okay. I mean, as long as it means something to someone, then, uh, then there you go. This, this next one. So, uh, we get, we're pretty much going to be talking about the original songs and of course Bob if there's anything else that you want to add about any songs we haven't talked about yet feel free to do so but we're on at this point we're on to It's Kwanzaa Time which is uh, introduced by The Brain because again in that Christmas special he and his family uh, are of African descent and celebrate Kwanzaa I thought this is one of my favorite songs on the album good, uh, good song yeah for sure I'm... like it's Speaking, of, I mean, speaking of, I guess, the Lion King. There's a couple of uh, world music elements to this one. It's just, it's just really. I found myself listening to it and kind of just getting real calm. It's a, a real relaxing listen. Yeah, sometimes you just need that. Cause like many kids' albums are in your face. Yes. And they don't, <laughs> and they don't really care. Not that they don't care, cause they, but. They just throw on what they think a kid would like, and they don't keep the parent in mind. I feel like kids and parents could enjoy this. Yeah, this is something that I feel like I wouldn't mind my kids listening to someday. I'm I like, in fact, around Christmas it would be a cool way of just like uh, at least even giving them the idea of like there are other traditions that people celebrate all over the world, and even right here. And Kwanzaa's one of them. And again, good on the people who arranged this and the staff to give some time to Kwanzaa as well. It's not even something, I f- at least I feel, I don't watch a lot of kids' TV these days. I don't feel like it's as represented. There's a couple specials I've seen that did it, but not not enough to, like, highlight it, you know? It's kind of been swept, on, not swept under the rug, but it's there and it's gone. 
Yeah. We get a we get another kind of one that ties into the Christmas special and it's a Muffy song and it's what's the use of presents. So earlier we oh, I was kind of talking about how some of them stand on their own okay. This one I feel like it kind of flows a little bit better in the special oh, because there's a yeah. there's a part there's a part right up at the top where Arthur's like like, hey, Muffy, I thought you were going to spend Christmas with Francine, but now you seem really sad. What's going on? And then that leads into the song, and they really needed to justify this one's existence because it's a song about how Muffy misses Francine at okay. Christmas time, which is I have a, I have a story about this. Oh, go ahead. I want to hear it. Okay, so the original version of the special has this, this recording of the song. Mm -hmm. But then... If you watch it on Amazon Prime or any other streaming service that's available now, Muffy's lines are redubbed. Like, like notice noticeably, obvi yes. obviously, if you were able to. And I'm like, huh. oh no, yeah. There's another song in this that I will highlight. I guess this could also be referenced as, as, for the special. But there's yeah. another song that they redubbed in this new version of it. I'm thankful that I still have the original VHS tape before they meshed with the special, the new version. So, when, so when you say that you, they redubbed it, like, do you know? Do you know what the kind of difference is, or what they changed, or is it just kind of the audio quality? Maybe? It is the vocal inflection, where. She says, okay, so there's, there's a, there's a part in what's the use of, what that song, I forgot what it's called, yep. what's, what's the what's use, the of, use of presents, yep. the, where Muffy goes, we, something we hadn't seen, right, and she sings it, uh -huh. but in the special, the new version of it, she literally whines it, like she's, oh. com she's complaining to the, she doesn't sing it, as opposed to this recording. Yeah, that's that. That would be that would be pretty noticeable because Muffy's got a very distinctive whine. And it makes me so mad. Because <laughs> I'm the, I grew up with the original, and I got this DVD thinking that I would have my version of it. That yeah. That air on TV, but no, they messed it up completely. Sorry, anybody who worked on it that may be listening to this, but whoever printed the new DVD needs to um, get fix it or something. It bugs me. Good, co good call on that. That's, I mean, that, but that also means that you're probably hanging on to a collector's item there with the original broadcasted version. Yeah, there's even a bigger one when we get to Buster's song. Yes, let's let's well let's get into let's get into that right now. It is uh, this I, this I feel like is one of the better remembered songs from the special among Arthur fans. It's Baxter Day, uh, and it's a, it's another one of my favorites on this album. It's you know a song about how on Chris on Christmas uh, Buster and Bitsy don't really celebrate Christmas. They celebrate Baxter Day. And they kind of just do whatever they want to do and hang out and have fun. And I mean. Uh, so this was another one where you kind of, uh... Oh, yeah. There's a, there's a story behind this. So, Ooh. so if you listen to the song, there's a part where he goes, Oh, yeah, baby, it's back to, like, he... Yes, yes. In the, in the new version, they literally cut out him saying, Oh, yeah, baby. So you hear him go, Oh, yeah. Silence. It's Baxter Day. Oh. Like, what did they think it was sounding like? Like he was, you know, doing it or something like. I don't know. That's wild. And I mean, that's too bad because that's like one of the things that really that I really like about this song is uh, Daniel Brochu, who's the voice of Buster. Just the verve that he puts into it, the spirit, and and you get it in parts where he's like, "Oh yeah, baby, it's Baxter Day," and I'm like, "That sells it. That makes it seem like Baxter Day." Yeah, they Day. literally silenced the line. They didn't redub it. They took, "Oh yeah, it's Baxter Day," so you know there's a missing space. 
That's lame. I don't I don't understand that at all. <laughs> and that's the version on YouTube, so if you look it up, you'll hear it. Well, so, well now I'm gonna hold on to this copy of the album that you got me, because I love this version. I'm can you know I might put it on my This is this is all this is pretty much good any time of the year. Baxter Day, it just sound, sounds dope. Like if you haven't seen the the special, it's just, you know, talking about Hot fudge Sundays on toast, napping all day, reading, visiting aliens. It's Baxter Day sounds like a great time. Yeah. But again, that edit just irritates me. Well, I'm glad to, I'm, I'm I'm glad to have you here again. You've got the you've got the inside track on these things that I didn't even know about. So, thanks for bringing that to my attention. Uh well, we are almost at the end of the album here. As you know, we're kind of talked about some of the carols in you know chunks and all that kind of stuff. But there's one here that is an original for this album, and it's actually well our favorite character here on Elwood City Limits. It's a Binky song. Yes. Shout out to Bruce Dingsmore. Seriously, great guy. Yes, you got to interview him recently too, yeah, Bruce Dinsmore. Com- it's coming out soon. Um, yeah, he's wonderful. Yeah, he's a he's a great guy. He's a great vocal talent too. Uh, happy holidays to him, to Bruce Dinsmore, the voice of Binky, and the song is called "I'm Not Scared of Santa," which is, uh, again, Binky. I I don't remember if he really had much to do in that special, but there certainly wasn't a subplot about yeah, him being no, afraid no. of Santa. The whole thing with Binky, and I. I reference. I said this to Bruce about how he he like baked. He he baked really bad. That's the only yeah. thing. Like like there's even one like when when Arthur breaks that glass bird or whatever, and there's that dream sequence, and then Binky just just shows up. Like what the. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like that's the only thing about Binky that happens in the special. Man, I mean, never, never enough Binky for my taste. And uh, this, this, this is kind of a fun one. Although it's kind of interesting that Binky has a unique—he has a unique phobia of Santa Claus coming into his house at night when he's asleep. And he's just like, you can just leave the presents on the lawn. That's totally not, fine. Not like, to, you don't have to come in. I know yeah. I know we're talking about Arthur, but that reminds me of um, that, that Rugrats episode where they set traps because they're afraid of Santa coming in their house. Oh, was that the, was that the Christmas episode of yeah, Rugrats? Yeah. It's, been, it's, it's been a yeah, yeah, time yeah. since yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, Chucky, Chucky's afraid of Santa, so he tells Tommy, we have to set traps before everybody goes to sleep. And they do this whole big ordeal, and that's when it reminded me. Of. I should rewatch that. Uh, uh, Rugrats also with the Hanukkah special too, so another show that was uh, kind of very inclusive as well. Yeah. Uh, there's also there's also like uh there's in this song there's like a backing choir that's supposed to be like almost intimidating Binky a little bit. Of they're just like Santa's getting near your house. He's circling Atlanta. <laughs> Stuff like that. Just like. Okay, this is definitely making him sound. And then at the end, when when you can hear Santa go ho ho ho, it's you know one of the more sinister ho ho hos that I've ever heard in my <laughs> life. Yes, yeah. he's on to him. He's on to him. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's a that's a fun one, and it certainly goes in a way that I didn't necessarily expect when I saw. I'm not scared of Santa. I thought maybe it was going to be like DW or somebody, but then it was Binky. <laughs> And of course, Binky, one of the one of the best parts of his character is that you never quite know where he's gonna go. Yeah, and I'm I'm just sitting here, and I realize there there's a song that we completely skipped talking about. Oh, what's that? Silent what? Night with oh. with Fern singing. Thank you for bringing this up. You're right. I I actually I forgot to write a note down on this. Yeah, let's let's rewind it back. So. Silent Night, I thought, and I remembered listening to it, and I was like, who is this singing? I forget who I, th- I think I thought it was Francine or something, and then, uh, you know, a couple of verses in, Fern's just like, oh, this is too boring, let me sing it my way, and this is kind of uh, maybe referencing what's to come in the Backstreet Boys special <laughs> when Fern becomes a rocker. That's what I thought, that's what I thought. 
when I when I heard it back. Yeah, she kind of, she starts. There's like guitars, and she starts kind of. I, it's to, to be like honest, like a heavy metal, one, heavy metal, yeah, like a a hard rock yeah. kind of thing, and. It's. I, I gotta be honest. I didn't listen to it the whole way because uh, Fern at that kind of decibel level is a little, a little screechy for yeah, my Yeah, you're like, all right, I'm done with this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't the most pleasant thing in the world, but th- yeah, thanks for bringing that up. That was another kind of odd- oddity. But really, they are using uh, a lot of different characters. There's a there's a Christmas Carol that. Uh, that mom and dad read do uh, together, and I forget which one that what, is. What one was that? I, uh... I think it was it uh, Angels We Have Heard on High. Like they at the beginning of the song, it's just like it's like okay, quiet, D.W. Mom and dad are gonna sing this one, and it's and it's their voice. It's Bruce Dinsmore, and I forget the name of uh, Mom Reed's voice actor. I'm trying to. I, I can't remember too. Wow. And it's an. an and it's a nice kind of like sung piano rendition. So it's nice, yeah. They really, they really get the full use of all of the cast throughout this, uh, throughout this album, and of course Francine taking the lead on the Hanukkah ones as well. There's another, there, the la- the, okay, Joy to the World. Yes. What we going on there? I we, mean, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? It's just like. I, I get the whole cast singing. I don't remember, but I remember I th- being like. I think, I think so. I, th- I think I, I, I again. I kind of, I kind of skipped through that one. It was just. I'm like, putting. Okay, it's... I'm putting it on real fast. You won't hear okay, it. Okay. Sh- sure, sure. 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 Okay. Yeah. They're all. Okay. It's like. We need it, but do we really need it? That one seemed like a like a real good album closer. We do get a reprise of Perfect Christmas okay, as the that's final a, track. That's a weird but, that's a weird one. Because if you remember in the special, he actually sings in that. Who who does it? Arthur? Arthur. But in this does he? he's like talking. Huh. It's not a reprise, he's just doing a holiday message. Yeah, this is just kinda But there is an actual Perfect Christmas reprise. That's not that, on this album. That's right. If I remember, it kind of like led into like just shots of everybody. So we kind of did a little bit of a singing line and then wrapped it up from there. But yeah, um, weird that they didn't just reuse that say, that singing. That's another thing that annoyed Bob on this album list. Because <laughs> there's just so many inconsistencies with this Really, I mean, it's great for what it is, but it's just very strange and disjointed. It's a real, it's a real oddity among the, among the Arthur canon, yeah. But uh, uh, and I and, and I can definitely appreciate appreciate the fact that it uh, that it kind of is is a bit confusing in a way. But is it, uh, Bob? Since this is something that you kind of brought to my attention, is this something that you uh, revisit around this time of the year very much? Every year, the special, Every year. the special and this, and ironically, the first time I watched this special, because yeah. I wasn't here for the commentary, so I just want to talk about my connections yeah. with the special here. Go ahead. The first time I saw it was on Valentine's Day. Oh. I, I know little that's out, weird. A little out of season, yeah. But, I, I, I guess, like... The library was giving away some of their tapes, and that was one of them. It was only Arthur video section. Oh, whatever. And then I, <laughs> and then I watched it, and I kept like rewatching and rewatching. I know that's bad for the tape, but it, it's just really great. <laughs> it's, I mean, in a way, that's kind of it's kind of endearing because. I mean, I don't have I don't have a VCR for my old my old tapes either. But the fact that you you know rewound it and watched it and watched it again, I mean, it's got to say something about you know how how much it affected you and how it's uh, how special it is for you still. Yeah, I mean, there's literally a line where Uncle Fred says, "Sometimes you don't get what you want in life. Sometimes you get something better." And I believe I posted on Facebook like that deep. That's really yeah. deep. That's a good. It's a good message. Like it. It is a really good special. And I mean, whether or not you listen to, 
uh, our commentary, I would recommend that you check it out around this time of year. And if any of those songs sounded good to you, uh, try and track down that uh, Arthur's Perfect Christmas album. I, I, I had fun listening to this. Yeah. And the, and the other one I sent you whenever you get to that. Yeah. That is a fun one because that has actual pop song covers when we get to it. If I yeah, that... if I come back for that, I have to come back for that because I already did this one, and I have so much commentary on that one too. <laughs> All right, so that so that's it. DJ Bob is staking his claim. He's going to be back for the next episode, which we talk about uh, an Arthur soundtrack, which will be sooner rather than later. I'd like to think, uh, Bob. Before before we get going here, uh, do you have any final thoughts? on Arthur's Perfect Christmas, the album. Well, if you can find it, grab it. Mm. But if you're paying, like, $60 or something crazy like that, don't Oh, my do. gosh. But that's, that, that's outrageous for almost any season. No, these you'd, days. Be, you'd be surprised. There, Maybe it, there are yeah. some things that are way overpriced. But, um, but because I'm new to the podcast... I kind of wanted to talk about my show a little bit. Just to... For sure, for sure, Bob. Uh, why don't you tell us about uh, the DJ Bob show and feel free to put in any plugs that you'd like before we uh, before we end off here. Well, the DJ Bob show is just a, a show in which I talk about things from my childhood and I interview personnel from it and it... If you remember it, Ogyar, I do too, and I've probably covered it. And it's because the DJ Bob show started in 2010, and it was a top 40, like, every other show there was. And then I really got to know myself and what I enjoyed, and that's how it came to be. So I interviewed people from Arthur, I, from Disney Channel, from Nickelodeon, anything that you remember, I probably have spoken to someone from it. You've got a, a you've got a deep episode list, and I'm 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 so impressed by the amount of talent that you were able to get on your show. Uh, you re- really check it out. If you, I found it on Apple Podcasts. Uh, what other services is the show on? Bob? Well, it's on Spotify. It's on uh, Stitcher. Some of the other. Like the Michael Yarmish interviews on YouTube, because I wanted to make that as accessible as I could for the new fans hearing it, so they didn't have to um, subscribe yet. Not that I don't want them to later, but but <laughs> just giving them an option there. It's a great idea, uh, Bob. Are you on social media? Where can people uh, reach you? I am. You can stalk me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm on Facebook. You can, um, you know, I my personal Facebook is kind of, you know, personal. But mm-hmm. if you, if you, if you um explain yourself good, I might. Uh, but like, <laughs> you can find me on Facebook by searching the DJ Bob Show. And you can go to djbobshow.com for all my shows and news and other stuff. Well, Bob, it's been a real pleasure having you on here. I loved talking about this with you. And uh, what 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 you what are you going to be doing for for the holidays? Uh, how do you celebrate around this time of year? Well, I spend time with family. I will probably do some sort of a Christmas special for DJ Bob because I haven't done one in five years. So Ooh. it's been a while for that. So dusting off the old Santa hat and um, playing some songs and all that stuff. So yeah, I love the holidays. So um, I'm glad to be able to celebrate it with you and your listeners. Me too, Bob. We're really we're really glad to have you. Uh, you came through with an awesome topic. I loved I loved what you had to say about it, and I'm glad that it's a part of your uh, the the uh, the whether it be the album or the special that it's part of your holiday traditions. That just helps it mean just a little little bit more to us too. So the best the best of luck on your show. Seriously, check out the DJ Bob show if you haven't yet. Uh, my name's Will Young, and for DJ Bob. 
We will hear you soon and DW. No I'm kidding. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> See you everybody. Happy holidays. I DW Reed will now sing some Christmas carols. If you